years since portable gas-powered barbecues were released back in the 50s, they've promised to make cooking outside as easy as turning on the hob. But some say they can't recreate the flavour of a charcoal-fired barbecue. So we've got one of each at similar prices to decide which is best. And we've ordered in some typical British barbecue weather. Cold with a light drizzle. Now, in the charcoal corner, I have the Weber Master Touch GBS E5770. It's a kettle-style barbecue. My Weber can not only give you that distinctive flame-grilled taste, it can also roast and smoke, and even cook pizzas, if you buy the right accessories. Well, I've got the Landman Triton Max PTS 2.1. Yes, John, today I'm literally going to be cooking on gas. With dual burners, it's got better heat control than yours and this rather snazzy infrared side burner, so you can cook things like sauces at the same time without going back inside. So basically, it's just a fancy camping stove strapped onto your barbecue. Essentially, yes, but think how impressed the neighbours would be. Talking of neighbours, it seems the producers ooh, ooh. have roped them in to deliver our first challenge. Get your barbecues dusted down and ready for cooking. Aren't they just here? Oh. To, to the, the garage! garage. Our first challenge will recreate the often laborious task of digging out your barbecue from the back of the shed. Let's wheel them out. <laughs> and my two-wheeled Weber makes this process a breeze. Oh. Sadly, Ooh. the four wheels on my Landman oh. wasn't as easy, not helped by the fact it's nearly double the weight of John's at over 40 kilos. That seemed rather an awkward process. <laughs> yes, I think it arrived in just about one piece. It was rattling a lot. Mm. Right. Right. I have a chimney starter to assist me. I ignite a fire lighter and place the chimney full of charcoal over it to get the coals white hot. But it's going to take at least 25 minutes. 25 minutes? Yes, well, I mean, good things aren't necessarily hurried. As expected, my landman is much quicker to set up. Connect a bottle, press the ignition, and you're good to go. Makes life a lot easier, doesn't it? It does. Right, I'm good to go. I'm going to pour my briquettes in. They all look nice and white hot. Put the grill in the middle in the centre. Right, I think we're ready. At last. You may have been quicker getting it out of the garage, but I think it's safe to say challenge one goes to my much faster to set up landman. On to test two, cooking. Let's see what's on the menu. Yes, corn on the cob and burgers, most nutritious. Right, and I've got the challenge here. Ooh. We've laid on lunch. All you have to do now is cook it. Fine. For our sound man, Ben. Ooh, he's very fussy. Best get to it, then. Today, we'll be cooking Ben a meat-free burger and corn on the cob. The beauty of mine, because I've got dual burners, is that I've made it slightly hotter on the right-hand side for my corn on the cob, a little bit cooler for the veggie burger. I can create direct and indirect heat zones by moving my charcoal baskets around, but I've got to plan that in advance or move my uh, items accordingly, which I probably ought to do, actually. It's ah, all quite goodness. a manual process, though, isn't it? And you're not quite as much as in control as a little adjustment of my knob. But I have a secret weapon. What's that? Fried onions. Does he like onions? Who cares? While Georgie turns her attention to caramelising some onions, I'm delighted that my Weber soon starts etching those distinctive char grills onto my burger. It looks done. I think it's burger time. It certainly is, John. I've got this. Ben! But will either of our creations please Ben's sophisticated palate? Moist, charcoal-y, in a nice way. Very good. Very good. Ladies and gentlemen, the new Paul Hollywood. Oh, right. <laughs> Come on, then, Betty boy. Come and taste my burger. Onions look good. Thank you. I made special effort with them. Um, it just tastes like it's been cooked in the oven. I've cooked it on the barbecue. I've put my heart and soul into that, Ben. But it's not really a barbecue. That's the problem. No. John, you pipe down as well. <laughs> With my charcoal barbecue taking a sizzling win for flavour, it's even Stevens after round two. Is there a pudding? Yes, I think there is. Chalk ice, my yes. favourite. And look, there's a challenge written on it. Ditch the ice creams. John, you should spit that out. No. Nope. <laughs> and pick up the scouring brush. Mm. I think we've got to clean. I was afraid they were going to ask us to do that. Can't we just leave them until the next time we use them like normal people? It improves the flavour, you know. Don't be 
like that, John. It's an essential part of barbecue tradition. And anyway, the producers have given us a strict five-minute time limit. The grill that gleams the most afterwards wins. So, John, I see that you have to actually clear out your charcoal. I don't have that problem. I'm straight away, I'm scrubbing. Ah, but my Weber has a handy facility that opens up holes in the bottom for the spent charcoal to drop through. John, the charcoal's blowing out the sides when you're doing that. I and there I say it, get I can't hear things. you over my one-touch cleaning system. Well, I see your one-touch cleaning system and I raise you some greaseproof ceramic. Which makes it quite easy to clean. Scrubs off. Very nicely. These griddles are stainless steel, so they should be easy to clean. I don't need to have any fear of scratching. Look at that, Georgie. Cut me up a treat. This round's mine. Don't be so confident, JB. I'm already wiping up. Three, two, one. Gloves up, John. Oh. Gloves up. Time to inspect each other's handiwork. Mr John <laughs> Bentley. <laughs> I was hoping you wouldn't turn it that way around. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got round to that side of that one yet. Well, I can certainly see that. Yep. And your scrubbing's left something to be desired. Well, no, I just need more time. Overall, I'd say you've done a fair job. What do you think of mine? I think it looks uh, very clean on first impressions. And uh, let's open it up. Uh, well, it's not absolutely perfect. There are a few marks in here, but, I mean, overall, I'd, I'd say it was finished. Perfectly clean enough. I think it's fair to say mine won this round. Uh, yes, undoubtedly. For easy cleaning, yours wins. Which gives my gas barbecue two wins and your charcoal model just one, John. But it's not over yet. It's back to the studio to fight this one out good and proper. Well, guys, it looks like it came down to flavour versus convenience. Yeah, absolutely. The gas is easier to clean, it's easier set up. Therefore, you use it more. On the other hand, though, the charcoal does give you more flavour, so if that's what's most important to you, it outweighs the other two factors. I've got one of each. And? Well, I season the meat first and use gas. It's more convenient. So convenient wins out. How about you, Craig? I don't like barbecues. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>